Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. You join me for the first instalment of Project Clutch on this Mark IV Mondeo. Um, today, I'm gonna get myself started, get the car jacked up and start taking some things apart. I read a few bits and pieces and just sort of clued myself up. Everything seems to be fairly simple from what I've seen. So we're basically just gonna get started and get cracking. I'm gonna tackle this the way that I tackle every other clutch job that I've ever done. And that is just to take th start taking things apart um, and just kind of go with the flow basically. I know that on these cars, the subframe, the front subframe has to come off um, because that impedes the gearbox from coming down. I don't know yet how I'm gonna support the engine because usually I use my cross brace, but on this car, um, it doesn't seem that I'm gonna be able to use that because there's not really a place to put it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. A few people did say in my last video to check to make sure that the master cylinder wasn't to blame for the loss of the clutch pedal. I have checked just to make sure, and it is definitely the slave cylinder, and I'll show you that in a second. Well, that's the first thing I'll do. I has been to a garage with the previous owner who I bought it off, um, and they confirmed that it was a slave cylinder. Right, I think that's enough waffling. Let's get started. All right, so before we get started taking things apart, I'll just explain to you how I have confirmed that the slave cylinder is the problem and there's not something else underlying. You don't want to go through all the work of taking all this apart, taking the gearbox out, because it is a big job, and then find out that there's something smaller that you could have done that would have fixed it and you didn't have to even bother with the clutch. Like I said, this has been at a garage previously and the guy who I bought it off told me that they said that it needs a clutch, but when you say he needs a clutch, Basically, the gearbox had to come out because the slave cylinder's gone. The clutch going doesn't typically cause an issue where the pedal goes to the floor. It's usually a hydraulic issue. So your master cylinder, slave cylinder, or somewhere in between, the hydraulic line in between. It's usually something like that. I know that the slave cylinders on these cars are very common to go. I've seen a lot of posts about Mark IV slave cylinders being rubbish and they just sort of explode. And that seems to be the case with this one as well. So over here on the left-hand side, we've got the reservoir for the clutch fluid, but also the brake fluids. There's two pipes I won't be able to show you, just down, sort of down there. One goes to the brakes, I think, and one goes to the clutch. So it goes along here, down the back, somewhere over there, and then down to the slave cylinder, which sits on top of the gearbox under this air box. Now in the actual fluid reservoir, I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a main compartment, so this bit here, and then there's a little slit just above where my finger is. And that, I believe, is where the clutch gets its fluid from. So the clutch and brake fluid reservoir are separated in there, but it's in the same one, if that makes sense. So if you do lose your clutch, like what's happened here, you don't get all the fluid drain out, and then you lose your brakes as well, because that would be pretty dangerous. So if your clutch goes, there'll still be enough fluid in there. The level will be high enough for your brakes to still work, so you can come to a stop. It'll just be the clutch that goes out. So as you can see, there's not much fluid in there. The fluid would usually be up to sort of about here. Now, in order to find where it's leaking from, it's pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is I've got a bottle of brake fluid here, and I'm literally gonna top this up, just fill it right back up to where it should be, so that the fluid can get to the clutch or the release bearing, or slave cylinder, whatever you want to call it. So that's now full, as you can see. So if we go ahead and pump on the clutch pedal, we'll have to do it by hand because the clutch pedal goes to the floor, but if we just press on that a few times, we should now be able to see where the fluid's coming from. And it's gonna be under the car. You could probably already, I don't know if you've see it on the camera. There's a big puddle. Directly above that puddle is the gearbox and also the slave cylinder. So I'll set the camera up under here and you'll be able to see it come out. Right, so you're now under the car and I am gonna press the brake, the clutch pedal even. So I'm now, I'm now pumping it. You should be able to see fluid coming out now. Yep, there you go. So that is our slave cylinder leaking and uh, it's pretty bad, it's completely burst. And that is how we know that the slave cylinder is gone um, because it's it's absolutely just dripping out of there like crazy. Whenever you press the clutch pedal, it's just it's just seeping out pretty bad. So that's confirmed it, 100%, slave cylinder gone. Now the work begins. So I think I've decided I'm gonna um, work in the engine bay first and then jack it up afterwards. It's gonna make a lot more sense for me to start taking bits of power here. Battery's got to come out, the battery tray, the air box. Um, and there's a few other ancillary bits around here, but mostly just this, what you can see right in front of me. And then I think I'll jack it up, take the wheels off, and then start taking off some of the stuff off the bottom, like um, belly pans and stuff like that. Right, I'm going for the air box first. It's got a Jubilee clip, and then just the sensor there. I think that's it. in there. Oh, 
Oh, there you go. Bit of a wrestle. Okay, pull up number one. So you can go over there. Now I'm gonna work on this battery next, I think. This cover is <laughs> pretty much toast. Don't know whoever took this off last, but they they're pretty brutal about it. Alright, I'll take this little eight mil out. It's a little bolt down there. The battery stay, and that should slide out then. So I'm hoping this will just slide forwards now, which it does. And we've got the negative and the positive there. I'll take the negative off first, I think. battery out. So we got in here. Right, so that leaves us with the battery tray in here. That looks like it's held in by more eight mils, maybe three of them. So annoyingly my camera wasn't recording that whole time as I just did that. But I've removed the battery tray now. That was just here. And then I've also removed this extra piece of air intake which just sat pretty much there. Just taken that off. Here's the battery tray. It's just held on by three bolts. So that's all off. You can see we've got a lot more access now in here. Um, just by taking those few bits off, we can pretty much see everything we need. We've got the gear selectors to take off. That kind of is next. And uh, the wiring harness along the front here, which is for like the reverse switch and for the battery wires and stuff. Just need to disconnect that from the battery. Start motor is there. It's a little bit tricky to get to but it shouldn't be too bad. And there's not actually that much more up here to take off, really. Other than that, it's just the gearbox bolts, but I've got a lot to do underneath before we can even think about that. Right, so the Mondeo is now up in the air. I'm always a little bit it's like scared of seeing such a large car up in the air, knowing that I've got to get under there as well. Um, I don't mind lifting up these small little cars like this, but the Mondeos, they're very heavy, very big. Um, I've put four axle stands under there, so I've got red ones and yellow ones, and then I've put the wheels under there as well, so it should be safe. I've given it a good old, you know, shaky shake, and it's not going anywhere. Um, I always just get a bit nervous, it's just me as a person. The next thing to do is underneath these things have got like two trays on them. One for the front, and one for the rear. This black one at the front here has got to go. And then there's a second larger one which goes under the engine, which is just here. This one seems to be held on by a bunch of 10 mil bolts, like so. And then the front one is some clips and some little bolts and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off and that'll give us a better look at the bottom of the engine and the subframe. And uh, we can get an idea as to what we've got to do to and get it all out. Right, out she comes. You can see where I've been leaking. There's the brake fluid. Now if we have a look under the car as well, you can see the bell housing and that's where our brake, brake fluid is coming from. It's pretty damn soaked. That's, if that's not a good indication as what's wrong, I don't know what is. <laughs> Right, there's one under tray. There's number two under tray. Got all the screws and stuff. This fell out, don't know what that is. This fell out, don't know what that is either. <laughs> right, so as you would have just seen, I've gone ahead and removed the inner wheel arch liner as well. Um, the access to everything is just so much easier. Um, I can get to all the subframe bolts, as you can see there. You can get to all the wishbone bolts and just, for the sake of six bolts, it's well worth taking that out because you can just access everything so much easier. Um, I've got to do the driver's side yet. I haven't done that yet, but yeah, it's a big old thing and it hides a lot of stuff. So that is gone. This is all it took to remove it.
Right, so as you can see, I've removed the driver's side uh, wheel well arch as well. So much mud fell out of it. Look at the state of that. Just mud everywhere. I'm going to have to give this a really good clean before I put them back in because that is just going to cause rust in the future. So my next plan of action is to start removing stuff, which is keeping the subframe in. For those that don't know, this here is the subframe. Um, it basically is there to attach all the suspension components to, so the steering rack's connected to it, which is this thing here, which goes up there. Uh, the lower arms connect to it, and also the sway bar connects to it. The front, there's not really a lot that mounts to it, but it's all the sort of rear stuff that you really got to worry about. So my plan of action is um, I'm going to remove the subframe without the steering rack on, without the sway bar on, and I'm also going to detach the uh, lower arms from it as well, so these here. I'm going to detach them away and they will stay um, in place. You can remove the bottom ball joint on these down there, but I don't really want to have to mess with the ball joint. It's easier just to take two bolts off that rear arm, one bolt off there, and then the arm will come away. And um, that's what I'm going to do anyway. I then need to remove the sway bar, which is those two bolts there. Can you see them? There's one here and one here. Just need to hold them with a spanner and there's a bolt underneath. Two of them each side and then there's one bolt that holds the steering rack in place uh, you get that from underneath as well i think there's about six main bolts that hold your subframe to the actual car and um and then the subframe should come down at least that's the hope so i'm going to start taking some of these bolts apart i'm going to spray some wd in there first because they look a bit crusty i am going to be referring back to the haynes manual for this you know i've never done this job before i've never worked on a mark 4 before so it doesn't hurt to refer back to this just to sort of give you a bit of guidance okay so i'm underneath the car and the first thing that's coming off is this exhaust bracket here you can see the exhaust runs down there two bolts there's one there and there's one on the other side i'm going to remove them and that should free up the exhaust from the subframe so these bolts here are 10 mils one here one the other side just going to crack them loose not very tight right so next up on the chopping block is going to be the steering rack bolts so this here is the steering rack it goes in there and the bolts come in from underneath i'll show you which one it is got two bolts here for this wishbone and then the one right next to it which is right here that is our steering rack bolt and there's one exactly the same place the other side 18 mils i'm going to have a go at using the impact but chances are we're probably going to, need to bring the breaker bar out because these are probably going to be quite tight yep Oh, yeah, they are tight. Nice long bolt. Right, so that's the steering rack bolts out. Just two of them. Make sure I keep them safe so I know where they go back. Right, so next up is going to be the anti-roll bar. Um, it's connected here on a drop link. And then as you can see, it goes up, round. And then in there, there's a bushing. And then that's held on by two nuts and bolts. There you go. So I've got a spanner on the top, which is a nut, 21 mil nut. And then on the bottom, there is uh, two bolts, as you can see. So I'm gonna hold the top of the spanner and then undo the bottom with the ratchet. And we should be able to take two of them off. And then obviously there's two the other side as well. So this sway bar should be free now. Yeah, as you can see, okay. So that's free from the subframe. So is the steering rack. You can probably see, lift it up. So they will now stay in place. When we drop the subframe down, they'll just sort of dangle where they are. Right, so with all this stuff back here, pretty much free, all the bolts removed. Um, there's another bolt for the front of the wishbone here. And that will release this whole arm away from the subframe so subframe bottom wishbone uh, once this bolt's removed that will pull out of there both sides and that'll be the suspension completely free from the subframe guys are tight these are it's a workout
So moving inside the car now, in the driver's side footwell, I need to undo the bolt that joins from the steering rack, which is that thing there. It's a pretty awkward place to film, to be honest, but God, it's tight. Why is it so tight? I got it. Right, there's our bolt. And then, as you can probably see, we've disconnected the, the actual column, which is here. It's been disconnected from the rack. Okay, so next up on the agenda is the smelly, messy job, which is going to be to drain the fluid out of the gearbox. The drain bolt is that there, power bolt. Looks like a, I want to say seven or eight mil. So I'm going to crack that loose and drain all the oil out of this because I want to remove the drive shafts and when I do that, I don't want oil to go everywhere. Right, so I guess it's about time for a quick little update. Um, I've been doing a bunch of work and not really talking through it. It's not the weather to be out here today, so I just kind of want to get as much as I could done whilst I had the time to do it. And I feel like I've accomplished quite a lot so far. The subframe is essentially ready to come out. The only thing that's left to undo really is the rear gearbox mount, which connects the gearbox to the subframe. Other than that, I think that everything else is disconnected. I'll just give you a quick look, even though you've already seen me do it all. The uh, lower wishbone are uh, uh, disconnected and I've just put them on a few bricks just so that the tension on the ball joint's not too much for a while. I brought them out to the side so they're out of the way. I've undone both of the drive shaft bolts and I've got both of the drive shafts out. As you can see, this is the driver's side one and you just saw me do the passenger side one. So they're now both free from the hub. I just need to pull them out of the gearbox. Again, this side, the uh, arm is free and just resting on some bricks underneath you've seen gearbox oil has been drained and have undone the rear um, exhaust mount you saw me do that first all the bolts for the arms the bolts for the sway bar the bolts for the steering rack so they're all now free and I believe that this bolt here that goes through the gearbox mount is the last one we need to do and then we can go ahead and actually drop the subframe down uh, which is quite exciting Right, so there's the bolt for that mount. And as you can see, you can now rock the engine. It's all now free. Right, so at the rear of the subframe, underneath here, there's a main subframe bolt, which is there. There's a cross member thing that goes across the back there. Um, and that's bolted to the body there. So there's three bolts to take out. I'm gonna remove the back ones first and then take them out. And then there's just one at the front, which is that big guy right there. You can take all the back ones out first and support it with like an axle stand or something or a brick. Um, and then take the front ones out and just lower the whole thing down. That was a 21 mil bolt and it was very, very tight. I had to swing on that thing. Right, so that there is the rear cross member. We can put that to the side. You can probably also see the rear of the subframe has now dropped from the car and is loose. I have put a bucket under there just to catch it if it falls a bit more.
and there we have one Mondeo subframe. Right, so as you can see, front subframe has been removed. I don't know if anyone can tell me what this thing is, but it looks like an electronic box, but there's no wires going to it that I can see. It just seems like we yeah, actually kind of just on there, so I don't really know what it is. It doesn't say what it is on top. So if anyone's got any ideas, let me know. But now that that is out, that gives me a lot more room, as you can see, to get the gearbox out. It's now completely clear now. So my jobs left to do are drive shafts have got to come out of the gearbox. So that's probably what I'll do next. The starter motor has got to come out, which is just up there. Then I think it's just the bolts for the gearbox. I don't think there's much else holding it in. Um, I need to support the engine from underneath, and then I need to take the gearbox off and lower it down. Right, so I've got both drive shafts out, as you've just seen. They actually came out really easily. Um, next thing I want to do is, there's a turbo pipe under here that goes underneath the plastic one. I want to get that out of the way because there's two gearbox bolts here that you can't get to because of this pipe. Looks like it's just held on this end and a little bolt there. And then just a Jubilee clip up that end. Someone hasn't put it on properly, as you can probably see. Removing that pipe has um, freed up a lot of room under here to be able to see what's going on. The gearbox looks to be bolted to the catalytic converter. You can see that there? There's a couple of bolts just up in there to remove, um, to disconnect them to. And then there's a gearbox bolt here. There's a gearbox bolt, I don't know if you can see it, just up there. And then there's a couple underneath here, which is now revealed. One there, one there. And then all that's gonna be left to do is just to support the engine under here on the sump. Um, and I'll get my gearbox stand out and support the gearbox and remove the gearbox mount and then we can wiggle it off. Right, I've removed the start motor bolts. I don't know how we'll be able to see this. That's the start motor right here. So that should now come out of there, which it does. It's basically just got to sit back a bit. I'm just going to let it hang in there really. Right, I'd say that was a pretty productive afternoon's work. Um, I managed to get the subframe out, as you've seen, which is very, very good. As soon as I got that off, that sort of paved the way to do the rest of it. And we're now at a point where tomorrow I'm going to come out here and I'll be able to pull the gearbox out. I've taken out all the bolts apart from two at the bottom. Um, I just need to support the engine, support the gearbox, remove the engine mount on the gearbox side, and then we can wiggle it off and we can bring it out. It's gone really smooth, actually. I'm very happy. I don't want to jinx myself, but I'm really happy with how things have gone so far. Um, I'm nice and grubby, as you can see, but it's been well worth it, that's for sure. I'll just show you where I'm at. Up here, everything is detached. There's the gear linkages, all the bolts are out, starter motor's out, hydraulic line to, to the uh, slave cylinder, that's out. All wiring detached, everything like that. Both drive shafts are out as well, you can send them down there. Right, so welcome back. It's actually been a couple of days since I last filmed, and that's just purely based on the weather. It's been on and off raining, even today it's been on off raining, it's poured down. I got absolutely soaked 10 minutes ago. It's now blue skies. Um, it's been really unpredictable. And so I've just been coming out here doing bits and pieces. And I've now got myself to the stage where the gearbox is ready to come out. I've unhooked everything. I've double checked that I've unhooked everything. So I just need to support the engine now from underneath, which I've got a jack to do. Um, and then I'm gonna put another support under the gearbox, remove the last remaining bolts and uh, wiggle the gearbox out and bring it down. That's the plan. So these here are the contraptions I'm going to be using. Um, I had to buy a new couple of little bits for this. Well, I didn't have to, but I decided to, to make my life easier. This is actually for gearboxes, for removing gearboxes, but it's so high off the ground that I'm never going to be able to bring the gearbox low enough. So I'm going to be using this to support the engine. I've made myself a little 
DIY wooden block thing with some soft foam pads on top so that I don't do any damage to the sump. So this is gonna, the sump's gonna be resting on there and I'll use this to jack the engine up and down. And then over here, this is actually a technically a motorcycle jack. So you put this under your motorcycle and it lifts it up from the frame. However, I'm gonna be using this as a gearbox helper tool. I'm gonna to put this under the gearbox. I'm gonna raise it right up. It comes up to about here. I'm gonna wrestle the gearbox out, rest it on it, and then uh, unscrew it via this. And just screw this up and down to raise it and lower it. Um, and then I'll bring it down to the floor on this, hopefully. That's the plan. So I'm gonna get everything set up and then uh, we'll remove the last few bolts and get this gearbox out. So the last two bolts to remove are underneath just here, one, two. So I'm gonna crack them and take them out. Right, it's the last gearbox bolt out. So the engine is free, as you can see, it's moving, it's resting on our jack down there. I need to now get this gearbox off. I might get like a pry tool or something and try and pry it off. Okay, I think we're off. You can see the flywheel. <laughs> it's a good start. Right, I'm gonna try and bring this thing down now. I've got my impact. The gearbox is uh, resting on my jack thing. Let's see how this goes. There goes slowly. All right, I've got the gearbox. I'm holding it. Wiring's in the way, of course. Right, slowly down. That is a heavy gearbox. Right, so there you have it. You've just seen the gearbox has been removed. Lots of sludge in there. And also, just inspecting the uh, slave cylinder. So this is what's gone wrong here. Uh, there's a bunch of different pieces coming off it, like pieces of ring and stuff. I'm guessing the seal inside here um, has blown and these bits have gone as well. The bearing don't sound too bad, but the hydraulic side to this is obviously no good anymore. So this is what we'll be changing out. This is the main reason we're actually doing this job. I'll make sure I give all this a clean out as well, get rid of all this gunk and stuff like that. But that is a gearbox out. This is, I'm not surprised either, because it's a diesel engine, the heaviest gearbox that I've ever played with. Um, I can barely lift it. Even just turning it around is a, a job and a half. It's a big old, like, dense old thing. I can, all the gearboxes I've taken out in the past, I've been able to like physically lift and either I'm just weak or this is a heavy old girl. So I shan't be doing, I shan't be moving her very far. I'm just going to kind of leave it under the car and then uh, change out the thingy, change out the clutch, which I'll now show you and then put it back in. So here is the clutch. You can't really see a lot at the minute. That's obviously the uh, pressure plate. You can see the dual mash flywheel in there as well. I'm going to be taking this off in a second. So we'll have a little inspection of it. And I'm also going to be changing the dual mass flywheel, so we'll take that off as well, so we can inspect the rear main seal. If the rear main seal is all intact and it's not leaking, 
I'm not going to touch it. I know a lot of people will say to do it while you're in there, but when I disturb things like that, they always end up leaking afterwards. So if it's not leaking now, I'm not going to change it. I'm just not going to bother. But we will be changing the clutch and the, uh, the flywheel as well. So I'll, get, I'll whip them off next. Right, there's the pressure plate. Not look too bad, there's a couple of little heat marks you can see. These ones here. This clutch plate looks like it's seen better days. You can see how the ridges are all disappeared. You can see some faint ones there where they're left, but for the most part, the clutch is just completely smooth, which means it doesn't have a lot of life left anyway. It's the same on the other side. See how smooth that is? If you compare it to the new one, so this one's, here's the old one, you can see how smooth it is. And then that, there's the new one. You can see it's got little grooves. That's how it should look. From what I gather, it wasn't slipping or anything, but this wasn't too far away from needing a new one. So it's probably been a lot of miles since this last one. You can see how much better condition this one's in. Obviously brand new. Good chance to just look at them side by side. They're identical, same size, same part number. Looks good. You can also see the thickness side by side. There's a bit of difference there. So do you know what's funny? When I started this job, I didn't have the intention of changing the flywheel. It wasn't something that I was going to do unless I know it needed it. Let me show you this. The flywheel is actually kaput as well. It's no good. Absolutely no good. You could never get away with using this again. I haven't actually ordered the flywheel yet, but I definitely will be doing it now. Right, so this here is the flywheel. It's a dual mass, which means it's got like two pieces that are put together and its intention is to dampen vibrations. Um, there is supposed to be a little bit of play to the left and right, so like that. Now I think this is a little bit excessive, but that's not really what I'm worried about. Um, what I'm worried about is this. <laughs> if I pull on the little dowel, the flywheel moves side to side. I hope you can see that, right? It moves in and out. You can probably hear that. That's not supposed to make that noise, believe it or not. <laughs> That's not good. So this flywheel is actually kaput. So it's a damn good job that we've uh, decided to change that as well. Right, well there she is. This is the flywheel. I should be able to show you a bit better now how it's failed. You see that lifting up? I don't think it's supposed to do that. So I've just noticed this as well. Um, these are the bolts for the flywheel and the heads of the bolts looks like the flywheel has been hitting them. I don't know if you can see that, but there's kind of a shine to them. They're black bolts. They've got like a black finish to them, but the top has got like a silver sort of scraping and you can see it on all three of these. In fact, most of them have got it. This one's got it as well. I think when the flywheel's been moving up and down where it shouldn't be, it's just been catching the head of these bolts because where they sit, you know, they don't sit that far down in there. And if this has been flapping around, you know, moving up and down as it spins, um, it's probably been catching them and uh, that could have ended badly, couldn't it? Right then folks, I think that's probably a good place to end part one. I feel like we got quite a bit done in this first part. We got the car completely stripped apart gearbox is out as you can see down there all the clutch and dual mass flywheel and stuff is sitting on the wall and what we'll be doing in the next one is obviously cleaning everything up and um, getting all the parts ready putting everything back on clutch and new flywheel and stuff like that getting the gearbox back in the car i don't know if we'll have it running by the end of the next one but we'll certainly have it mostly back together i hope you guys have enjoyed this i've tried to show you as much as possible um, without being too boring that's what i always try and do i always try and give you as much information as possible without it being like a step-by-step -step sort of dreary video so hope you guys have enjoyed it if you have make sure you give it a thumbs up it helps out my channel a lot for those of you that have bought stickers so far massive appreciation uh, you guys are directly funding 
the dual mass flywheel. It wasn't a cheap part and uh, you guys have really made that a lot easier on my bank account. So thank you very much for everyone that supports stickers. If you want to contribute, you still can. I'll leave, always leave the link for the stickers in down below. I'm very happy with how everything's gone. Touch wood, everything's gone smoothly so far. It's been not a bad job. I was very nervous about this one because it's a big car, big like chunky diesel engine. And for some reason, I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than clutch jobs I've done in the past, but touch wood again, turns out that um, it's pretty similar, pretty similar. It's definitely something that a DIY could do as long as you're confident enough. Um, I definitely would recommend it. So join me in the next one where we start getting this thing put back together. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you all. I'll see you guys in the next video.